Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hare and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. In August 1963, General Motors Holden trumped the market with the release of the amazing E.H. Holden. In 18 months, they sold over a quarter of a million of them. And now it's time to celebrate their 55th anniversary on this week's episode of Classic Restos. By the time 1963 rolled around, Australia's own car had evolved into something mighty, capturing the hearts of many new car buyers. The facelifted EJ, featuring the first of the red engine, continued its lower lines with power swept sculpture, good visibility and new power in either 149 or 179 cubic inches. Interior coverings were new, and there was a new look roofline for 1963 to excite the new car buyer. And now, a little something about the E.H. Holden Car Club of New South Wales. The E.H. Holden Car Club of New South Wales was first formed in May 1978 to foster interest in the EJ and E.H. models of the Holden range, comprising the years between the 31st of July 1962 until early 1965. Every month the club has an event to participate in. These events vary from annual events to a cruise to a pub for lunch, barbecue in a park or an attraction, poker runs, show and shines and weekends away. Initially the club started out with a handful of members and has grown in different years to have large numbers with ages ranging from 18 through to 80 years of age, including both male and female members. A special version of the EH, part of the pun, was designed for motorsport, hosting a bigger clutch, tougher tail shaft, bigger brakes, but with no more engine power than from standard. Apparently, the previous EJ three-speeder was significantly upgraded with a new bell housing and bolt pattern, stronger gears and a nodular iron differential carrier. This car was known as the S4, made in limited numbers and known for running Conrod straight at Bathurst at 6,000 RPM and a 110 mile an hour speed, driven by the then Storman Norm Beachy. This car was the first 100 mile an hour car produced factory by Holden. And speaking of such an amazing car, there's no guy here today better to tell the story than Harvey. How are you, buddy? Good, Fletch. Thank you very much. Um, 1963, uh, EHS4. Uh, I've owned the car for about six years. Uh, it's been restored for three years. Myself and one other bloke uh, rebuilt the whole thing from ground up. It uh, took 14 months to totally restore and it's what you see now. Harvey, the S4 is such an unassuming car. We're talking of a car factory produced by Holden, designed for racing, yet so simple in so many ways. The car still left the factory with cross-ply tyres, no more power than standard with the 179, some bigger brakes, a tougher tail shaft, a couple of little things, but what right. they put, or what Norm Beachy put one of these things through was incredible. Yeah, well he could, uh, he put triples on his after a while in, in your racing in a different class, but uh, this particular S4 went to Bathurst, only three went there. Uh, this was the backup car, and they, uh, uh, one of them pranked up at Mount Panorama in uh, the 500, and they used my tail shaft. And uh, this is S4 here is probably the most renowned at the moment, and it's the only one we know of out of 12 left uh, restored. When we look at the car inside, how amazing is it? We have a rubber floor, yeah. three-speed manual. Nothing, no improvement on seats. We're, we're still talking stock standard bench seats here. Uh, the painted steel wheels, two-tone paint uh, on the turret matching the wheels. It's a sleeper, such a sleeper of a car, isn't it? Yep. It's um, come out of the factory totally stock virtually, except for a few little things. The block's a little bit different. 
Uh, the gearbox on the side, the, the housing is different. They're, it's got quick release brakes on them. Uh, it's got a bigger tail shaft, bigger tank, 12 gallon tanks, except for the nine. Carburetor on it, um, an automatic one. And um, it's still, still single barrel Strongberg, though, right? All, yes, yeah. totally stock. Everything had to be stock. He wasn't allowed to race it if you didn't. He had to have the, even the jack had to be stock. The thing is, too, nothing jumps out on the car with special badging. To see one of these driving along, unless you know your stuff, you'd never pick one. No, you wouldn't have a clue. You would just think, oh, there goes another EH. But um, people think they come out with uh, four speeds and uh, twin carbies and things like that. They never, but they had to, the 125 were made. They had to sell back in the day. Uh, through the dealership, so many before they could take them to um, the Bathurst to race. A bit about your restoration here. Under the car looks just as nice as on top of the car. You've done a, a superb job here, Harvey. Yeah. I think, yeah, we, uh, like I said, uh, myself and a mate, John Taylor, everything was done at my place. Uh, painted at my place, it's in acrylic, the way it came out of the factory. Uh, the motor was built at my place. There's no doubt about it, the EH Holden is a superb looking car. They sold all over a quarter of a million of them back in the day. The HQ bumped them off in sales because that series ran for three years. But to have an S4 and 13 left in the country and there's one behind us here, that's, uh, yeah, I'm speechless on that one, Harvey. Yeah, um, I'm pretty lucky, I suppose. Um, uh, Blake rang me and he, he said to me, oh, I'm selling me S4. He knew all about motors and all this, but he couldn't put the car together. But a uh, real nice bloke. Yep. But he, he was really pleased when he seen the car. When he yeah. did see the finish, he cried. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would have too. Uh, you, you, you can't get a better restoration than this, mate. Congratulations yeah. again. Thanks, Thanks, Harvey. Thank you, Fletch. You're welcome. Pleased please. to meet you, mate. You're Thank welcome. you. No worries. My passion for cars began when Nana and Pop bought their new Toyota Crown. It was Nana's, really. She loved that car. We went everywhere in it. My passion now is just the same even though my cars are a little different. I've still got Nana's car, couldn't part with it. And I reckon if she was here today, she'd be insured with Shannon's too. Call Shannon's on 13 46 46. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems, finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Ferntree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. Hare and Forbes Machinery House has been family owned and operated for over 85 years and it's easy to see why. Planning on welding? Look at these welding tables and clamps, air compressors and different air tools, sandblasting cabinets, through to spray guns. Everyone is welcome at Machinery House. There are competitive freight rates around Australia and you can buy online at machinerymouse.com.au. So remember, Hare and Forbes has the range. And as the wind decides to come on in and knock a few things over, we're scooching down here on the other side of the car. How you doing, Mick? Yeah, pretty good, Fletcher. How you going, mate? Good, mate. Good. Love the station wagon. EH wagon, a pram. This is this is beautiful. Thank you, mate. Yeah, full ground up rest, though. Um, yeah, not a bad car, if I must say. It takes takes us back when we were kids, uh, even before that. A family car, away on a picnic for the day. Yep. Um, this car is just beautiful. It's got some NASCAR accessories as well. Yeah, mate, yeah, got a little bit of NASCAR to it, um, just to, you know, brighten her up a bit more, you know, bring her away from that full standard prem, but, yeah, just to be something different. OK, now tell us the story, Mick. What was it like when you got a hold of it? Mate, um, look, the car was painted, um, a thousand pieces. Um, bloke 
it just uh yeah just fallen out of it and um yeah i just come across as in between a couple of ads and um yeah just went from there mate you did a very good job putting it all back together yeah um long process but um yeah we got there in the end yeah. a few uh a few old fellas give me a hand to you know just finesse a few things so yeah do you like what people say to you the, the comments that you hear stuff like oh we used to have one of those cars do you do you get a bit of that yeah, mate, yeah, always get that, um, you know, a few head turners, um, you go for a drive down the street and you always get an old fella falling off his, off his perch and having a look, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's good. We look at the, ins uh, the interior of this car, uh, that's beautiful as well, very, in uh, very inviting on the inside to, uh, the seats are saying, come and sit on me. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, yeah, there's only one saggy seat, it's the driver's seat because no one else gets in the passenger, but, but, um, yeah, no, nah, it's, it's quite nice to drive, so yeah, gets along the freeway, alright. What's the colour of the car, Mick? Uh, Buller grade metallic, mate. Original uh, prem colour. Um, yeah, 1963 she is. So, um, yeah, she's October car, pretty early in the age. So, yeah. Amazing, too, with these Holdens. They were just over 1,100 kilos in uh, the four-door sedan. So, like the early Falcons and, uh, I guess, to an extent, the early Valiants as well. The early 60s cars, they weren't big and bulky. They, weren't, they, they were lightweight cars. Yeah, look, you know, you, you're looking at your H and they're quite a small car, you know, like against the Commodore or a Falcon of these days or anything else. Um, you know, they're a very small car, really. Yeah. And they still uh, put a family of five back in the day. Three kids across the back seat was, if you had the Holden, well, hey, you were there. Yeah, yeah, that's right, you know, pretty comfy, you know. We went down to Albury uh, about three months ago and five of us in the car, you know, yeah. a few of the boys and we loved it, you know, it was good fun. So, What, what was your build time on your rest day, Mick? Um, look, mate, um, yeah, I had a lot of the stuff already done, so, um, yeah, look, I did 18 months, so, yeah, just finessing things, it's never finished. Unreal. <laughs> just, it's, it's just beautiful. We've gone from the S4 to the wagon. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Thanks, mate. mate. Have a good day. Uh, will do. Thanks, mate. Stay out of the wind, eh? Yeah, I'll try to. Yeah. <laughs> and, of course, if you have anything to do with a classic bike, car, or a truck club, make sure that it's listed on the Shannon's Club for all the world to see. Find out more information when you visit shannons.com.au. As we make our way through the 55th anniversary of the mighty E.H. Holden, time for Colin. How are you, mate? Very good, Fletch. Thank you very much. That is good. Now, time on today's show for an original EH premiere, one that has not been restored, original condition, preserved as the day it left the factory. Wow, where did you get hold of this, Colin? Well, the wife myself saw it advertised in one of the magazines, and it's a Melbourne car, and uh, uh, we uh, it was bought from an old couple, and uh, the husband passed away, and... Uh, she couldn't drive it anymore, so we went to Melbourne and drove her back, and we've had it since about 1990. I've got all the paperwork, uh, there's, it's all original uh, log books, all that type of thing, so it's never been touched. So, body, uh, we leave that alone, yes. how the mechanicals, we, we get to that section, how, how is it there? I've had the transmission out, naturally, because it's done quite a few kilometres. Yep. And uh, that's the only thing that's been out. The motor hasn't been out. Uh, just normal mechanical uh, things that need to be done. Yeah. And uh, that's all this. Been a few places in its time? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah the, uh, the wife and myself have been to every EH All-State run since 1995. We've driven there and back. We've been to Western Australia. We've been to Tasmania. We've been to Queensland, Victoria. Yeah. We're going to go to uh, Western Australia next year. Yeah. We've always driven them there and back. Yeah. We've never put on a trailer or a car or whatever the case, yeah. you know. Isn't that something? It's great to have one of these preserved cars. It's a moving time capsule from yesteryear. But to enjoy the car and drive it at distance is something extra as well. Um, your presentation here, Colin, I really love that. You've got your, your suitcases sitting here at the back of the car, uh, period correct from when the car was new. The suitcase didn't come with the car. I purchased those later. Yep. They're very, very rare. One thing I, I always admire about these early Prems is the interiors, the seating. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Now, in this case, you've got the, um, the seats in original condition. And look, uh, they're showing the signs of wear, but, but that's what it's about. We, we like to see this. That's exactly correct. I will have to get the, the front bucket seats uh, redone. 
Uh, to see a car sitting here with white wall tyres, uh, the original wheel covers as well, which they all look brand new as well. They're, they've never hit a kerb in their lives. Um, this is real gold mine stuff, and uh, I say this often on Classic Restos. These are the types of cars, in my opinion, that we're all after because, uh, well, there's, there's only so many of them left on the planet. That's exactly correct. I mean, it was good to see the, some of the young people coming up, preserving them in the original way they were. Yeah. It's good to see the young people getting into the club scene. Oh, yeah. And uh, that keeps the clubs going, you know, because we've all got to get old sooner or later. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm I totally, younger. Well, I totally respect if you ever see a P plate on a classic car. Uh, that that guy or, or girl almost needs you know a, a bit of a, a congratulative wave you know because that that's that's a big thing because um, we are looking uh, at the up and coming classic car market behind us and it might not be it, it is pretty thin so you are right we see a young person getting involved in in our hobby right. it's very important it certainly is we've got uh, uh, quite a few young people coming up and uh, they will take over when we no longer can do that. Yep. You've got to admire this guy, hey? Enjoying his premiere, turning up to car shows, that's what it's all about. Good on you, mate. Lovely talking to you, Colin. Thank you very much, Fletch. You're right, mate. Thank hope, you. Hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I certainly, I certainly will. <laughs> How's Cole with his original EH Prem, hey? Bless his heart. He's got the original externally lubricated 179. That's OK. It it's all right to be externally lubricated at the car's age that it is. That stops the rust on the outside. Every weekend around Australia, motoring enthusiasts get together to share their passion for cars and bikes. It's a passion that brings us together. All sorts of people, all sorts of cars and bikes. From the classics of today to the classics of tomorrow. At Shannon's, we understand enthusiasts. So when it comes to insurance, it's got to be Shannon's. Shannon's, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. How would you like to double your garage space and work on your cars easily? Well, bring in your own hero with a Lift King hoist. Easy to install models in one, two and four post styles. Check the very nifty Spider 2500 portable mini scissor lift. Hero hoists are either Oz certified or carry the Euro CE, your guarantee of quality construction and reliability. I regularly stand under my Lift King, so when you need a bit of a lift, why don't you go stand under yours? Martin's Panel Masters has three modern accident repair centres. They service Melbourne's inner, outer east and the fast growing south east corridor. Your vehicle will receive the best from state of the art repair equipment finished beautifully from computer based paint mixing systems. Finished in Australian compliant spray booths. Martin's Panel Masters, located at Fern Tree Gully and Berwick, also Box Hill Panels. If you have a restoration project, Hair and Forbes has the tools that you need. Shrinker stretchers, dollies, mallets, bead rollers, profile gauges, professional panel restoration kits and so much more. Now I warn you, enter at your own risk because you will end up buying something. So come along to your Cap City store or browse and buy online at machineryhouse.com.au because Hair and Forbes has the range. Time now for an EH Ute on today's show. It goes without saying. How are you, Lee? Very good, Fletch. How's you? Good, mate. Good. A bit windy? Very windy. It's very windy today. That's OK. It doesn't matter if it's raining, if it's windy, if it's uh, uh, a lot of heat. Uh, Fletchy gets out and works in all the elements and continues to bring the show to the people. Very good show, too, at that. Thank you, mate. It's very nice of you. Now, this Ute, it is really something. It makes you think, I wonder if they looked this good when they left Holden back in their day. Uh, probably, but not really. <laughs> no. Well, if, if they did, they wouldn't have. They wouldn't have looked that good for long because, being a commercial vehicle, they really got uh, the hardest end of the deal, didn't they? Yeah, they did get flogged around a bit. So being a porpoise car, so yeah. and that's what they were treated like. So. It's amazing we get back to this element of simplicity and a restored vehicle so many decades down the track uh, can look so good. Uh, walk us through what you've done here, Lee. I've bare metal the car, every nut and bolt off. Finished the whole body work and resprayed it with acrylic. 
It's just beautiful. We look inside uh, the bench seat, uh, the, the rubber floor with the Holden emblem sitting proudly up on top of the, the transmission tunnel. Um, everywhere you look on this car, it just looks good. Yeah, I try to, try to keep it true to this era. You've done pretty well, Lee. Now, engine-wise, what have you done there? I bought a 179 out, 60 foul, put a 202 crank in it. Bit of a balanced job, bit of a head. But to keep stock, I had to run the standard car to make it look period for Club Rego. But it's a nice, fresh motor. Now, Lee, one thing I love about this car, I know I bang on about this quite a bit, is painted steel wheels on our classic cars. And to think back in the 70s and 80s, the steel wheels were, were thrown away because guys went mags. And now, everyone wants the steelies back again. Yeah, they've become more popular because Club Rego, so they look a bit more period. But I've, I've had these wheels since I was a kid. So they've been around with me for a long time. Yeah. Steel wheels years ago, they used to use them as stepping stones in wrecking yards, didn't they? You're not wrong, and for stands to stand the old wrecks up on. That's yeah, it. True, That's true. And box trailers. So. Now, being a ute, obviously it's got an interesting history. Uh, what can you tell us there, Lee? I think the car come from a guy in Maitland, and he was a one owner, and I bought it off him probably eight years ago. And that's the only history I know of it. Yeah. So this, he had two. Yep. One was his Sunday car and the other one was his work, work car. Yeah. And this was his Sunday car. Yeah, good on you. So. That's beautiful, mate. Thanks for bringing the ute along here today and turning up to the 55th anniversary of the mighty EH holder, mate. It was good to see you, good to meet up with you. Thanks for having me, Sledge. Well, here we are at this wonderful show and shine. Show and shine, those two words, a lot of car events use it regularly these days as their promotional term. But where did the saying show and shine actually come from? Well, it dates back to the 1920s, where Billy Show and William Shine used to get around together in their sparkly car. And when they did, a lot of people used to stop and stare and point and say, there goes show and shine. Time now for a modified EH on today's show. It's an extension of your own persona. There's no limit to your imagination as to how far you can go when you decide to modify a car. This one is very tastefully done. How are you, Stephen? Good, Fletch. How are you? Good, thanks, mate. Now, we're talking 64? 64, that's right. That's correct. OK. First thing, well, I guess, the wheels. What have you done there? Uh, they're a, a nitro billet 7-inch rim, so just full aluminium. Yep. Which needs to be polished most of the time, so... Yeah, I like them. Nice. It's tastefully done what you've done. You haven't gone overboard. That's right, yeah. I'm happy with it. Absolutely. Now, inside the car, a bit of stitching there, a bit of leather work. Yeah, it's actually it's synthetic leather. A um, friend of a friend um, did that for me about probably five, six years ago. So the hood lining I did myself, but yeah. apart from that, it's all been done by a professional upholsterer. Yeah, yeah that's the way. I'm, I'm a big believer in outsourcing. If there's something you're not too sure about, outsourcing is the go because they're experts in the field. The job comes back, well, fingers crossed most of the time. Very, very uh, well done indeed. Um, now, on that note too, in terms of your colour scheme on the outside, now we've got a white turret, we've got a turquoise colour here, is that correct? What's the colour? It's a Gippsland green, so it's original to the car, to the plate. I was close, wasn't I? Yeah, and it's a Fowler's Ivory roof, so it's like a white, which most of the whites are Fowler's Ivory. Right. So, but it's it's standard, actually. Now, was it your creation, Stephen? Um, it's standard to the car, so when I had it resprayed, I went with the original colours. Yeah, good. So I'm happy with it. So it's sort of retro looking, but yeah. I love it. Isn't that nice? Do a modified car, but then keep it in the parameters of, of how it was standard in some ways as well. It's, it's kind of nice. All right, lurking under the hood, what's going on there? It's uh, just a warm 186 board to 192. Um, got some triple S shoes, but I haven't put on yet. So that um, probably 12 months time, they'll be all detailed and nicely um, going, so yeah. yeah. Good on you, mate. Look, thanks for hanging around, Steve. It's towards the end of the day here. It's a nice example, as I said earlier, of, of what you can do to an EH, to any car for that matter, uh, keeping it within the parameters of standard, but just going outside the boundaries a little bit. That's, uh, that's kind of cool. Thanks again, mate. Uh, thanks, Fletch. You're welcome. Thank you. Well, the mighty E.H. Holden and its 55th anniversary, and you've seen it first on Classic Restos. As I say at the end of every episode, until next week, no matter where you're watching the show from, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching.
you can like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash classic restos TV and watch catch up episodes at shannons.com.au. Classic Restos is proudly brought to you by Shannons, insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Hair and Forbes Machinery House, Pace Farm, Hero Hoists, and Martin's Panel Masters. <laughs>